Hey folks, this is lab number 10, and this week we are going to deal with exceptions. Um, exceptions allow you to make your code more robust. Without exceptions, when something goes wrong in the program, the program is simply going to crash, and it's going to print out a stack dump onto the screen, which is really not user-friendly. It also can have security issues. So in general, when you're writing code, you're going to want to think through all the things that could go wrong, and you're going to want to deal with those in your code, and that's done using exception handling, which is generally going to be a try catch block, or perhaps you're going to be throwing some exceptions. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a little program that takes in a user's name and their age, and it checks to make sure that what you're getting back from the user is valid. So I'm going to start this off and I'm going to create a new method. So public static uh, string get name, and it's just going to read in from the user their name. All right, and so we have console dot read line, and we're going to store it, that into a string. So I'm going to say string name equals that. And normally you would just return name at this point, and that would do what you would do. Um, so down in my main, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say string name equals that and I'm going to say name equals get name and then I'm going to instead of just saying hello world I'm going to say hello plus name okay so so far no exception handling um, and what I'm doing here is I'm just asking them to enter in their name I read a name and I print back out hello name and so everything so far should be pretty obvious I really haven't done anything unusual yet and it works well as long as the user does what you tell them to do but what happens when the user does something stupid? And so for example, it says enter name and I just hit enter. Well, it says hello blank. That's not really great. Likewise, I could certainly put in some random gibberish in here and it would accept it because it has no idea what is a valid name and what's not a valid name. So there you go, my name is now that and it says hello blah, blah, blah. Okay, so none of that makes any sense and we should really check and deal with all of those circumstances. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to catch those types of things and I'm going to deal with them. So first off I'm going to say if the name.length is less than one then that's not valid. Now you could say right here I'm sorry enter in another name and you could put this in a loop and have it keep re-asking over and over again but the other way to do it is to deal with exceptions. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do this with exceptions and I'm going to say throw new I'm going to call it a bad name and I'm going to say the name was too short. Okay, now I, I just made this up. I'm asking it to throw something called bad name and bad name doesn't exist. This is not one of the built-in exceptions. So in order to make this work, I'm going to have to define what a bad name is. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to create a bad name.cs. And inside of that file, I'm going to say um, using system and I'm gonna say class bad name and I'm going to do colon exception because I'm extending exception. This is going to be a child of exception. Every time you make a definition for a new custom exception, you're going to pretty much do the same thing. You're going to put in a constructor um, for bad name uh, that has nothing in it. And then you're going to put in a second constructor, which takes in a string, which we'll call message. You can call it whatever you want. And then it's going to call base passing message to the parent. All right, so basically what this does is it just takes in a, a message and it sends it to exception, which is its parent. Exception already knows how to deal with a message. All right, so now in my main program, um, I am now going to throw a bad name. That name was too short if they enter in something that's not valid. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. And again, when it asks me for a name, I'm just going to hit enter, which is not valid. It's actually going to look worse than it used to. In the past, it used to say hello, and then it would give me a blank name. But now what happens is it actually crashes and says unhandled exception, bad name, the name was too short. So at least I'm seeing the error message, but this is really, really ugly and not what you would want. So how can we make this better? Well, down here in my main method where I call get name, I'm going to change this to be inside of a try block. So I'm just going to wrap this in a try, and then I'm going to add a catch where I'm going to catch bad name, which I'll call it bn. And if that happens, I'm going to console.writeline. The name was invalid because, 
and then I'm going to print out the message, which is going to be known here as bn, that's this variable right here, dot message. And that's the message that was passed, which will be the name is too short. So now I'm going to run this again, and we are going to once again hit enter. And instead of seeing the crash that I was seeing just a moment ago, we're now going to get a nice error message. And it looks like I'm telling the user what the problem was, and so on. Now I'm still doing the hello at that point, but we could certainly deal with that. All right, well, that's not the only thing that could go wrong. So we also might have the name is too long. So we could say the name is greater than 100 characters. That's probably not right either. So again, we would throw new bad name, and this time the name was too long. And if you have 100 characters in your name, I apologize. Um, we might also have... Uh, so that was an else if, is what I meant to type there. This is going to be another else if. You probably shouldn't have an exclamation mark in your name. So we say name.contains um, an exclamation, then throw new bad name contains invalid characters. Now, that's not the most efficient way to do this. And I'll explain what's going on here, but let me just run it and my name is now Enda with an exclamation mark, and you're going to see that it does catch that and it does correctly deal with it. Um, but, and there you go, that worked the way it was supposed to. But this is not very efficient because I'd have to have another else if for the pound sign and the at sign and the dollar sign and the percent sign and all the ones across the top of the numbers. How about the commas and the periods and the angle brackets and less than, greater than, question mark, slash? There's a whole lot of characters that you would probably have to do. And you wouldn't want to have to have an if statement for every one of those. That would get very obnoxious. But this is just to give you an idea of how you can throw an exception. If you were actually coding this, you'd want to look up something called regular expressions, which allow you to compare a string to a regular expression, and you can define what the valid characters are in the regular expression. So you would say a regular expression where the characters contain A through Z, lowercase or uppercase, and maybe numbers, and that should be it. There should be nothing else in a name. And so you would say, if it, if it does not match this regular expression, then throw in valid characters, and that way you're catching all the things that are not valid. Um, but you got to be careful with that, because certainly people can have hyphens or underscores in their name. It's possible for people to have apostrophes in their name. Um, think of somebody like who has a last name of O'Connor or something like that. There would be generally an apostrophe after the O. So you have to be careful about things like this, but you would want to code it such that you're looking for all the things that are invalid and catching all of those. All right, so that was dealing with the name. Now we're going to deal with the age. So what I'm going to do next here is I'm going to do public static uh, int get age. And get age is going to similarly console.writeline enter your name age. And then we are going to console.readline and we're going to store that into answer. All right, now what they gave me was a string and I need to convert that into an int. But immediately, you should have a little alarm bell going off in your head. What if they give you an X? When you try to convert that into an int, it's going to not work. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to say int 32.parse, and I'm going to send in answer, and I'm going to put the result of that into something called int age. Now, that could very well crash. And as a matter of fact, I'm just going to go ahead and cause it to crash just so you can see what I'm talking about. So down here, I did get name, now I'm going to do age equals get age. And I'm just going to print out that in the print statement down at the bottom as well. So I'm going to say plus your age is plus age. All right, and I need to define age before I go into all of that. So I'm going to say int age. There we go. All right, so I'm going to run this. And what you're going to see is that the program is going to crash. Because when it asks for my age, I'm going to hit in x or any character that's not a number. And the parse int32 is not going to work. OK, I didn't return an int. That's what it's complaining about. So we're going to return age. There it is. All right. Um, it's not going to work because when it tries to do an int32 parse on something that is not a number, that's going to throw a format exception error. Uh, use of unassigned local variable age, and that is because of... Uh, it requires me to initialize it. I don't really know why, but there it is. 
So um, I guess the try block may not happen, in which case the age would be uninitialized, and it's not happy with the fact that it's uninitialized and I'm using it in a print statement. All right, so enter name, that's good. And then enter age, I'm going to type in X, and you can see I have an unhandled exception. This time the exception that was thrown was a format exception. Input string is not in the correct format. So I could absolutely add a try cat or a catch block here that catches a format exception. Um, and so that would be one way of doing this. So I'm going to say catch format exception uh, fe, I guess. And again, I'm going to say console.writeline the age was not a number. All right, and so that's going to catch that now, and this time it won't throw an exception. It will just give me the age is not a number. Um, and so this is why you can have more than one catch block. So and, uh, and there's the X, and it says the age was not a number. Great. Um, it's because you might be catching different exceptions that are coming out. Well, what happens if they type in negative 1 or if they type in 190? Neither of those are valid ages either. So I might say if age is less than 0, um, throw new bad age to low, and else if the age is greater than 150, um, throw new bad age to high. Those are probably the bounds of that. And again, I need a bad age because I'm using that here. So I'm going to go out and create bad age.cs. And it's going to be very similar to bad name. It's going to be using system. And then we're going to um, class bad age extends exception. And then we're going to have a public constructor bad age, which does nothing, and a public constructor bad age that takes in a string message and calls base on message. All right, and so now back down in main, it's possible that new age might throw a bad age. So I'm going to go ahead and catch that in my big long list of catches. So bad age, we'll call that BA. Um, and we'll do plus BA dot message, which is the message that I got back from there. All right, so those three different catches in there. Um, so we'll go ahead and just test one of those and make sure that if I put in a number that's too high, um, semicolon expected on line 47. Yep, there it is. Um, we're going to put in an age that's too high, and we're going to see that it should throw bad age with too high. And I'll get a nice message back from it, hopefully. OK, there we go. And my age is 199. And it says the age was wrong, too high. Hello, Enda, your age is 0. OK, so you can see that those are working. And I could also obviously have a catch for exception. If I was going to do that, it would have to go down at the bottom because it's the most general. And that would catch anything else that could go wrong, although I do think I've caught most of the things. So that's the idea of writing code that is uh, more fault tolerant. This is going through and checking parameters to make sure that anything that you're getting from the user is what you expect, and dealing with all of the possibilities. They give you a name that's too short, too long, it has invalid characters in it, an age that's too low, that's too high, or has invalid characters in it, and you're dealing with all of that and trying and catching. This is how you write robust code. It's good from a security standpoint, it's good from a user experience, and you need to get in the habit of always thinking especially when you're getting input into your program from a user, a file, an IO socket, or anything else, you always need to be thinking, what could possibly go wrong? Because the answer is a lot. All right, so that's today's lab. Um, you guys are going to go write some exceptions, and I will see you guys next week.